What's going on guys? My name is Bassem Saleh and I'm going to be reviewing and kind of detailing and showing the Canon Rebel T7 bundle on Amazon among the many different bundles for this camera on Amazon and kind of show you what it includes, how everything attaches to the camera, what these pictures do and don't look like with and without those filters and attachments and how I sometimes use the equipment. So let's get into it. So this is going to start with the Canon Rebel T7 body. The included kit lens, which is an 18 to 55 millimeter lens, and then it comes with uh, one battery, uh, one regular wall charger, one camera strap, and that is it for the base camera kit. For the other stuff that the actual bundle on Amazon comes with, it's going to consist of an extra battery. That's it's not a Canon brand; it's a little bit of an off-brand. Two Lexar 64 gig SD cards one universal sd card usb reader it also reads uh i believe two other cards i'm not too sure exactly what they are it also reads micro sd which i am just realizing now actually it comes with a five piece lens cleaning kit it comes with a screen protector for the camera that i actually already applied to the camera and threw away the packaging for that already also comes with a very small miniature tripod a 60 inch collapsible monopod and it comes with a lens cap keeper. I probably should but right now I actually don't use it at all. I'm going to take some general pictures with the camera using the included kit lens and then I'm going to show you what those pictures look like without any kind of Photoshop or anything. I'm also going to show you what the video looks like and what it sounds like as well in case you were looking to get this for just general videography, if you want to do that of course. So this camera itself has a lot of dials uh, for a lot of different modes. I'm not going to go over specifically everything, I'm mostly just going to cover um, it's auto and it's manual. Auto just means you can't control anything, the camera does everything for you and you don't even have to worry about it. Manual is where you control all the specific details that I think a lot of people uh, do photography in anyway. This includes ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. So what I'll do here is I'm going to go over the entire range of each setting for shutter speed, aperture, and the ISO. So ISO, oops, gotta go back, how do I go back again? So the ISO goes from 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, and 6400. For aperture, it goes from 4.5, 5.0, 5.6, 6.3, 7.1, 8.0, 9.0, 10, 11, 13, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 25 and up to 29. This is the part where I also talk about shutter speed and the entire range it goes to. I'm just going to detail the top and bottom because there are a lot of speeds for this thing. When you click the uh, screen button located right next to the viewfinder, you can switch between taking pictures between the viewfinder and the screen itself. My recommendation for this would be to just switch it to the screen and adjust all your settings. And once you have perfect settings, switch back to the viewfinder and take the pictures as you see fit. It'll be much easier that way. Another thing I wanna mention is that with these lenses, especially for people who are very new to photography, kind of like myself, there are two additional settings on the uh, camera lens itself. The first one is AF and FM which pretty much means autofocus and manual focus. There's also a focus ring on the end of the camera that gets you a little more clarity with your shot. When you have it set to AF or autofocus, it's going to utilize that specific focus ring. If you set it to MF or manual focus, you'll be using it yourself to adjust for shots. The camera is not really going to do anything. It also has a stabilizer on and off for general image stabilization. I just kind of leave this to on because I'm not too sure how my pictures would turn out without it. So some of the cool things that this kit comes with would be these two additional lens attachments. These would be the wide angle lens and the telephoto lens. So these lenses actually fit to your base lens right here. Uh, they kind of screw on top. It's very delicate when you go to put them on, but it does change the overall shot you're taking. And there we go. Now it's in a wide angle shot, so when you actually go to look at it through the viewfinder, you'll notice it's a much, much more 
uh, wide angle compared to how it was previously. Me personally, I haven't used these for now because I'm still learning all of this. I'm actually trying to avoid, actively avoid using these until I feel like I'm ready to start using them, if that kind of makes sense. So just like the lens attachments, these attach right to the basic kit lens as well. The three filters it comes with are the UV protective filter, the CPL, also known as the circular polarizer filter, and the ND8 filter. Because I haven't really used these yet, the UV protective filter, I'm just gonna read right off the box. Removes or absorbs ultraviolet rays, giving sharper contrast to your film, video, and digital images, and protects your lens from scratches or fingerprints. The CPL filter increases color saturation, darker blue skies so white clouds stand out, and eliminates reflections from non-metallic surfaces like glass or water. The ND8 filter allows you to shoot four f-stops lower in brightly lit conditions, because like I said with the lens attachments, I'm not really using these yet until I feel the need to or the need to actively try and learn how to properly use these. Until then, they're staying in the uh, little pouch that they came in. You'll be able to see video and photo quality towards the end of the video. Next thing would be the uh, 60 inch collapsible monopod. I don't find a big use for this because I don't use monopods. A monopod is really something for when you have a very heavy camera and you kind of need to like lean against it and really hold for a steady shot. At this moment, I don't particularly need it. It's a nice bonus. And I also found out something neat that I'll show in a second. The other cool thing is this uh, small tripod that it comes with. Uh, I could potentially be using this. Uh, I'm not too sure yet. I wanna see how things are going. My phone itself already has a tripod, a very small one that has a phone attachment, so it kind of works fine for me already. Cool little thing that I found out with these two, uh, with these two stands, is that if you take this tripod and you remove the top piece that originally attaches the camera, then you take the monopod and you remove the foot which I believe I actually already did, then attach the tripod legs in the little gap. Okay, hold on, I actually put this one on wrong. It doesn't twist that much, so I really wouldn't recommend doing this that often, but what you have now is somewhat of a better monopod uh, that you can actually stick to the floor now. And it's standing on all three feet, so it's perfect. Because the screw at the bottom barely goes in. It's only about a few turns before it disconnects. I think it's a little unsafe, but if you're getting this on the implication that you were going to use this pod in some kind of manner, you could do this. Again, I wouldn't really recommend it too much. Also, I forgot to mention the monopod comes in its own little um, case. So now I'm going to go over the lens cleaning kit. Uh, it's very small. It doesn't really come with a lot. And also I haven't used this as well. So it comes with a uh, lens cleaning fluid, uh, the blower brush, which is kind of like a little uh, suction cup with uh, these soft tails at the end for cleaning the actual lens. Lens cleaning tissue, which comes in this little uh, booklet here, comes with uh, a regular uh, red uh, microfiber cloth and five cotton swabs. This kit itself also comes with a five-year limited warranty. Just the cleaning lens kit, not the actual camera. Then we have the uh, SD card reader. Uh, like I said, it plugs to USB right into your computer and then you just plug any SD card you have into it. So in this case, this one would go right in on the side and it plugs in like this. The USB itself it doesn't register. It only registers the SD card plugged in. When you plug this in with uh, no other card inserted, it's not going to do anything. The Polaroid, the Polaroid screen protector is actually already on here. Uh, this one I thought was already cut to size. They're not. So this isn't specific to these kinds of cameras. It comes with three separate sheets and it has size guidelines for how to cut them to what proper size. I think I cut this one to H because it goes from A, B, C, D all the way up to... I wanna say J or K, and I believe I used H to size for this screen. It gives you tools to help uh, squeeze it on there and get air bubbles out and be able to properly apply it. And any air bubbles that I didn't end up getting out that night because they were really small, kind of went away on their own the next morning. So by the end, it was actually 
pretty fine. The last thing I forgot to mention is the carrying case that comes with it. This is a Ritz brand case, much like a lot of the gear that already came with the camera. Um, on the inside, it comes with some of these Velcro organizers. You have a big one and you have a small one. There are about, I believe, three of these and two of these. Currently, I have it so that there is a massive pocket that lets my camera sit in the middle, along with um, two smaller pockets that fit the lenses, filters, or my sunglasses in that small filter pocket. It's not a bad case, but I actually don't like it for one completely different reason, which is that the strap on the case is obnoxiously uh, short. Uh, I think it's really, really short. Even when you go to extend it to a longer length, it's still really, really short, and I don't like this at all, especially because I bike around with the case on, and this thing kind of just dangles at my side and jiggles very hard, sitting on my side, sometimes wrapping around to the front. Personally, I don't really don't like this case for that reason, but if I could get a bigger strap, by all means, I would have no complaints. With all that said and done, let me actually show you the kinds of pictures that this camera takes with, when, without those lens attachments, and with and without those lens filters, and a regular uh, video with the included microphone in this video to show you audio quality as well. This camera does not take an external microphone. I thought I had bought the one that did. It's actually the T6i or the T7i that does that. So if you're looking for one that takes an external microphone, this camera is not the one. So these are just a collage of pictures that I've taken with the camera. Uh, the first three are ones without the any lens attachments or filters. The next one's a wide angle. After that is telephoto. And then after that, I've just put on the uh, bunch of different uh, filters that came with it. Uh, the CPL compared to the UV and the ND8 has a lot more shots in this collage only because there's the outer ring you can turn to kind of adjust the polarization for each shot. So that's why a lot of these kind of look similar and then some start to contrast with a little bit of rainbows. Uh, but those are all the pictures. Let's move on to the video now. All right, so sitting in my room, um, recording 1080p on the Rebel T7. Uh, it doesn't have an external microphone jack, so what you're hearing is just the direct microphone that comes with the camera. Uh, my computer under this desk is off. There should be no other sound in the room besides a watch I have ticking over there that you're probably not picking up. There's natural light coming from my window as to why I'm lit right now. And there's a little bit of background like noises like I believe some bike industrial lawnmowers going out in the background somewhere down in the neighborhood. I hear it and the camera might be picking up on it. I don't have any other natural light besides that and I don't have any noise besides that. The window's completely shut, so um, this is just the test for that. Hopefully after watching this video you guys have a little bit more idea of what this kit comes with or have at least someone helped you out in finding a certain kind of bundle or a certain kind of kit on Amazon or another website that you're slightly interested in. I do recommend the T7. I think it's a very good beginner's camera. I was previously spoiled with a mirrorless camera that I used a little bit for a photography class but I wanna kind of learn on a little bit of an earlier stage using this camera, and I think it's a very good camera, and I think the bundle has a lot that it includes. I don't really see myself buying anything for this camera for the near future. Also be sure to subscribe. I'll be hopefully posting as much as I can during this quarantine, and with that, stay inside, social distance, and have a good time.